Um, tonight, we're going to be talking about opportunities in S-REITs um, with the lifting of COVID-19 restrictions. So this is the agenda for tonight. Um, before I hand the time over to uh, Ritesh, uh, he'll be going through the uh, S-REITs, a review of it. Right? And then uh, Grace will actually be going through the macroeconomic uh, backdrop itself, headwinds and the tailwinds. Hey, Jason, thanks for the introduction, Sifi. Move on to the next slide. So when you invest into a REIT, in a way, you are taking kind of part ownership into one of these properties. And as the income is generated from the underlying property components, that income is then passed on to you because 90% of the profits that are generated needs to be passed back to individual clients. You can buy and sell REITs you know, like a stock. And what that also translates into is that there is immediate liquidity. So you don't have to wait, right? When you invest into physical property and you want to sell out your property, you will probably need to wait for the right buyer, for the right price and everything versus when you invest into REITs, it gives you a more liquid way to invest into real estate. The REITs market in Singapore is fairly diversified, right? It has exposure where you can invest into industrial REITs, you can invest into hospitality REITs, you can invest into retail and office REITs. These are things that you see more often. What is more important to also understand is there are a fair bit of representation from industrial uh, diversified uh, healthcare and related subsegments as well. The SREITs market gives more than double the kind of dividends that you get from the STI index, right? So that I think puts REITs in a very special category in terms of generating income. And the good news is it's not just the income where the SREITs market shine. When you also look at the overall returns of the SREITs market, the SREIT markets tend to do much better than the overall, say, the equity index. Uh, in Singapore as well. So if you're looking for an income solution which can give you, you know, fairly consistent dividend yield to persist over time, you wanted it to be also in Singapore dollar denomination, then SREITs definitely would be uh, one of the top choices for people to consider as part of their income generation. And what you see is obviously retail, office, and some of these segments have much higher dividend yield. Is also reflective of uh, kind of the price corrections that have happened into these segments over the last couple of years. You are seeing recovery in these cyclical segments such as retail and offices. And what that means is like, you know, while the dividend yields are pretty attractive at these current levels, there is also a potential price appreciation that you can look forward to. If you are someone who is looking to generate an income and uh, you're looking at a solution which can give you a certain amount of income as well, um, REITs can definitely be um, a, a part of that portfolio. So, um, you can start off small by investing into REITs and reinvesting these dividends back into the portfolio as well. And over time, what will happen is as the REIT, as your REIT portfolio grows, and suppose you reach say two fifty thousand dollars, uh, two fifty thousand multiplied by five percent is twelve thousand five hundred, which you divide by twelve will give you that thousand dollar a month kind of passive income. Right. So that's the way a lot of people, especially the you know, um, older age demographic folks who are looking to generate an income, they would kind of back calculate uh, how much do they need to invest into REITs to generate a certain amount of income. The, the REITs market and specifically the S REITs market in Singapore gives you pretty high dividend yield, but it is also very efficient in terms of returns and risk as well. So while the distribution yield is fairly high, what you see is on the volatility side, it is one of the lowest volatility compared to a lot of like global indices and global REIT markets as well. Similarly, if you're investing into say the US market, Dow Jones International, um, the risk is lower, but the returns are very, very low as well. I think S REITs definitely are a very, very attractive um, you know, yield generator, but not just from a yield standpoint, but also from a return, total return standpoint. Um, S REITs and you know I think even Singapore Equity right as much about the Straits Times Index um, it's done pretty well as compared to the global counterparts and REITs have been quite resilient you know lately even as um, like global equities and U.S. equities have had a challenging period. All right, so the first headwind um, I think this is not a surprise to most people is just higher interest rates. Uh, the next headwind is speculation, which is an environment where there's um, inflation but low growth and in some. Um, occasionally like negative growth. And then the tailwinds, on the other hand, um, it's reopening um, and then a resurgence of economic activity, not just in, in Singapore, but also regionally. And then lastly, um, some of the you know, pandemic type of investment or not really investment, but consumer behavior that we think will carry to the next few years. 
Yeah, so REITs along with many like other capital intensive sectors are sensitive to interest rates, you know, given its impact on borrowing costs and yield spreads. So according to SGX research, about three quarters, that's 25% of S REITs, their current debts are either in fixed rates or they're hedged through floating to fixed interest rates. So, and I think ultimately, you know, like whether there's growth, like growth matters here, right? Economic and earnings growth drive equity returns. And similarly, like economic and rental income growth would drive returns of S REITs. Inflation. So this is uh, something that I think everyone has been hearing a lot about. Um, and we want to show some analysis done comparing the North American REIT versus S&P 500. Um, the U.S. have performed well when inflation is moderately high. So that's the 25 to 6.9% um, type of environment. And we would expect a similar trend to play out in Singapore too. Right? So income from real assets like REITs um, are tied to inflation. So as leases and like streams of revenue increase, um, that gets passed on in, as income. So as economic activity increases, you know, rents raise, utilization of these properties improve, and the benefits are passed on to the investor. Yeah, thank you. Um, next slide. So we get asked this quite a lot, right? Like what's the best way to, to beat inflation? And the answer is that you have to be able to grow your wealth at a rate that's higher than inflation. Uh, this was announced in February, but the um, the full year like GDP in 2021 was 7.6%. And this year, MTI is expecting about um, 3 to 5%. Um, CPI, like we covered previously, you know, it's 5.4%, one of the highest in 10 years. Um, but, you know, REITs being, um, you know, having an inflation beta of more than one, it, it, it can be a good growth inflation hedge. With the easing of measures such as... Um, group sizes, and then um, allowing for the sale and consumption of alcohol after 1030, we think that um, th these will be pretty strong headwind, uh, sorry, tailwinds for the sector. There has been like a really high pace of growth in the last quarter as compared to before and the falling in vacancy rates. And there has been also kind of like a bifurcation of um, like higher, higher grade offices um, as companies feel like they have to kind of really provide a nice working environment for people to to come to work um, and also more mixed use developments are taking over older properties and like, you know integrating spaces where people um, work, live, shop and dine. So the price index and the rental index um, have both sort of turned around as been an inflection point. And according to SGX research, like building valuations for some of these um, higher grade uh, office spaces like the Marina Bay Financial Center Towers, uh, One Raffles Key and Capital Bay Tower have also increased with higher rental rates. Um, rents are expected to grow about 4.6% a year on your basis in 2022. And this comes on the back of rather limited new office supply and also just aging buildings that have been taken offline for redevelopment. Right? And then with um, like more like flexible office space and like some more tech companies moving to Singapore, we also see that there has been a growing demand for, for that. Uh, next is industrial. So investors are typically, you know, like or traditionally associated industrial REITs with warehouse facilities um, and industrial buildings. But now they are pivoting into like more specialized um, new economy assets, like business parks, you know, modernized logistics spaces and data centers. And such assets grew in demand during the pandemic. We expect this trend to continue. With reopening, we're also expecting to see a shift um, in spending patterns at shopping malls. So um, in the last two years, like things like grocery stores did really well and small people make their own meals. But more recently, you know, it's been more difficult to get a reservation and we expect dining in volumes as well as sales to increase with you know, larger group sizes and then no time limit on last call. So new construction has been disrupted um, and this actually provides somewhat like a protective envelope um, around real estate, right? Because you have low supply, like low new supply coming in and growing demand. So it's a pretty good backdrop. Yeah, so overall, um, if I could summarize just what we talked about, about the risks and opportunities. Um, so there are, you know, some, some risks to the, to the outlook, um, but on interest rate risk, you know, S rates are not as sensitive to US um, rates. And when there is growth and inflation, um, we seem to do quite well. But recent events are unlikely to derail growth completely. Um, and given that REITs have an inflation beta of more than one, this means that they are good hedge for inflation. Uh, we think that they will continue to play that role well. And lastly, you know, on supply disruptions and then um, an increase in economic activity. Uh, so we're seeing that you know supply disruptions are actually not bad for the, for the sector. 
and it helps to support valuations in the short term. And then again, um, you know, green shoots across various REIT sectors like retail, industrial, and hospitality.